Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm doing a series of videos on air regulations for DGCA examination to obtain a commercial pilot license. So whatever you want to know about air regulations, it's right here. So do follow my channel, subscribe to my channel, keep watching my videos. Today we are going to discuss about search and rescue operations in civil aviation. So let's get started. All the contracting states individually as well as with the support of their neighbors they will be carrying out search and rescue operations whenever and wherever needed in their territories and uh, in the high seas as well as well as uh, uh, they might support other contracting states for their search and rescue operations also so all this is listed in annexure number 12 so, uh, in the high seas and areas of undetermined sovereignty, search and rescue would be done in accordance with the regional air navigation agreements. Next point is, there are various national provisions given to different agencies and committees so as to carry out the search and rescue operations in India over the land. National Aeronautical Search and Rescue Coordination Committee designating Secretary Ministry of Civil Aviation as its chairman. They carry out the search and rescue operation over the land and for the ocean it is National Maritime SAR Board Search and Rescue Board designating Director General Indian Coast Guard as its chairman. So the search and rescue operations will be provided to the Indian territory and the territorial waters as well and also over the high seas as and how it has been uh, given the responsibility by the uh, ICAO. So the airport authority of India has uh, designated four FIRs namely Delhi, Mumbai and Kolkata as the four rescue coordinate centers. In the areas over the high seas, uh, the search and rescue services will be provided by the Indian Coast Guard, so, uh, Coast Guard through three maritime rescue coordination centers located at Mumbai, Chennai and Port Blair. And uh, the search and rescue operation over the Indian airspace, which is excluding the oceanic areas, it is coordinated by the Airport Authority of India with uh, the SAR agencies, whatever are there. Then uh, over the territorial waters, here the territorial I, I mean by oceans. So in the oceanic areas of India, it is coordinated by the Kolkata Mumbai and Chennai FIRs and provided that they have been supported by Indian Coast Guards. So coming up to the next topic which is the search and rescue equipments. So uh, whenever a search and rescue operation is being held such an aircraft is uh, equipped with the uh, uh, the instruments for which coming from which the communication would be very easy so the so as to communicate on a aeronautical distress and uh, scene of frequency in which these uh, distress calls are being made the devices for homing and uh, homing on the distress frequencies and also uh, in the maritime areas they shall be equipped with the vessels to communicate so basically vessels communicate so that is the vessel which we are talking about in here for the maritime uh, search and rescue operations we, we use this vessels so it is uh, operated on the frequencies 2182 kilohertz 4125 kilohertz or 121.5 megahertz this is the distress frequencies you would all know so uh, moving on, so this search and rescue operation is not only restricted to the Indian territory, it can be done at high seas also and also it would be uh, maybe some other person, some person from other contracting state would uh, be in uh, 
distress situation so that is why uh, in order to communicate with them we have to use the international code of signals that is understandable to all of all the people around the world so uh, coming on to the next portion uh, if you are if the sar uh, aircraft search and rescue aircraft is dropping food and water um, for survival or any other survival equipment that would be packed in containers and would be indicated by streamers of blue color so there are certain operating procedures for pilot in command so whenever at a scene of accident uh, if they see an aircraft in distress or any uh, other observations of urgency or uh, distress then in that case what they have to do is the first point keep the aircraft in distress uh, sight so this means that uh, you have to, the pilot in command will be keeping the uh, aircraft in distress in sight until and unless uh, they are asked to leave or they they will say that we don't require your further assistance till then they have to be there and uh, they can the pilot in command should determine its position and uh, uh, transmit it also have to report the uh, appropriate rescue coordination center and also ats not just rescue coordination center it should be ats unit also fine so uh, next point is for if the pilot in command uh, uh, no, not pilot in command if the aircraft any aircraft it intercepts with a distress message then the pilot in command of that aircraft will have to acknowledge that distress message record the position transmitted by it uh, take the bearing on the transmission okay so whatever they are transmitting and bearing they are telling that uh, way they have to proceed the aircraft and inform the appropriate rescue and coordination center or the ats unit and also await for the instructions by the uh, rescue coordination center or the ats or any further transmission next topic is search and rescue signals so if you find a, a sur surface craft anywhere then the aircraft have to give the signals to the surface craft so that uh, appropriate help could be reached to the aircraft in distress in that case what the aircraft can do is either circle uh, circle the uh, surface craft at least once cross the projected course of the surface aircraft close ahead at low altitude so you have to be at a low altitude and uh, they'll be rocking the wings opening and closing the throttle changing the propeller pitch and uh, also uh, you can head to the direction in which the surface cra craft is to be directed that can be done and if the surface craft acknowledges your signals then uh, they will uh, send a code pennant this means that there's a vertical red and white strip uh, uh, um, you know signal that they'll be ho hoisting it on you so you can uh, that would mean that it, it, they have understood your message and uh, next point is uh, flash T is by the signal lamp in the Morse code. T S is it's not T S it's T's. So a series of T's will be flashed, and then uh, uh, they can follow the heading that has been directed by the aircraft. And if they are unable to comply in that case. International flag N will be there hoisted, and they'll be uh, flashing a series of N's in the Morse code. Here are the ground air visual code for the use of survivors. So these are the symbols here and what does they mean? So this means the they require assistance, require medical assistance, no or negative, yes or affirmative and this means proceeding in this direction. Uh, the following codes are used for used by the rescue units. 
so this means that operation is completed uh, found all the personnel this means only some personnel are found this means that we are not able to continue and returning to the base have divided into two different groups and each are proceeding in different directions indicated like this and uh, information received that aircraft is in this direction and this means that nothing found and will continue to search these messages uh, these symbols should be at least 2.5 meters long and shall be made in very much conspicuous um, uh, like contrasting colors and all with background and signals very much prominently visible right uh, and the obviously the obvious facts are that they can use anything for showing the signals that could be a uh, stripes of fa fabric parachute materials or pieces of wood, stones, or any other material like that. Okay, so um, air to ground signals um, will be uh, as follows. In the daytime, uh, by rocking the aircraft wings and at the night, during the darkness, they'll be flashing on and off twice the aircraft's landing lights. Otherwise, alternative is navigation lights. Lastly, the satellite aided search and rescue. So India has evolved the satellite aided search and rescue program participating in COSPAS and ARSAT system. So it operates in 406 megahertz. I'll tell you what do they do. Uh, the location accuracy here is 5 kilometers. Yeah, here I've written 5 kilometers. So what do they do is that this system will be detecting the transmission of this frequency. Okay, uh, this frequency 406 megahertz and they will be uh, transmitting the signals to the um, SRR that is the search and rescue regions and also not only just in the Indian territory but also the search and rescue regions of the neighboring countries as well example Bangladesh, Myanmar, Bhutan, Indonesia etc. Okay, fine. So uh, under this program only the, there are two local user terminals, LUT we call it, that is situated in Bangalore and Lucknow with Indian Mission Control Center, INMCC at Bangalore. So uh, they actually work in coordination with the rescue coordination centers and uh, the international mission control centers. So as I said that uh, this program has you know uh, made two local user terminals one is in Bangalore and Lucknow and they actually work uh, the, the main one the center one of the Indian ministers uh, an Indian mission control center it is in B Bangalore and they work in coordination with the RCC the RCC's as well as the international mission control centers now the INMCC which is in Bangalore it is connected with the RCCs of the major major cities which is the Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, Kolkata through the AFS network. So if any distress alert received from these areas are covered in uh, areas covered is more automatically transmitted to the RCC. Okay. Next is SAR's, SAR agreement. SAR is search and um, rescue. So search and rescue agreements have been signed with different countries. For example, the Royal Government of Bhutan. So India can seek SAR assistance from the adjoining RCCs of other nations as well in accordance with the, this bilateral agreement. So for the purpose of SAR, the authorities of other states who wish to uh, conduct their research and rescue operations in the territory of India, they will uh, have to uh, transmit a request and give the full details of the project mission and projected mission and uh, then uh, there, that would be further taken care of by the authority, uh, by the designatory authority. Okay. So that's it. 
So this was all about search and rescue operations in civil aviation. I hope you liked my video. If you found it informative and helpful and interesting, do give it a thumbs up and drop a comment below. Also, do subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos coming up in future. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.